Hi everyone, I'm Patrick and welcome back on my channel. So yesterday, Chris Ladner, the co-founder of LLVM and the Swift programming language, announced a new programming language called Mojo, which builds on top of Python and is designed specifically for AI applications. And in their keynote, they claim that it's up to 35,000 times faster than Python. So let's take a quick first look at it. So Mojo combines the usability of Python with the performance of C or C++, unlocking unparalleled programmability of AI hardware and extensibility of AI models. So this is one of the main motivations. We all know one of the main drawbacks of Python is its speed and poor low-level performance. So what ends up happening is often we use Python as a glue and have the actual implementations in C++ or C. For example, this is what happens with NumPy or TensorFlow or PyTorch. Or for AI applications, we even go a level deeper and write code in CUDA, which is optimized for your tensor operations on, this, on the GPU. So Mojo tries to unify all of this. So here it claims write everything in one language, no C++ or CUDA required. And at the same time, it should be as simple and familiar as Python. So let's have a look at some of its features. So first of all, Mojo is designed as a superset of Python, so you can also write Python code, and in fact, the Hello World looks the very same as in Python. So a lot of the language features and the functions and the syntax are the same, but then it has additional features on top to extend this. So I will go over this in a few moments. But what I also want to mention is that right now they mentioned this in their docs, how compatible is Mojo with Python really? And at the moment it is still very early and missing many features, but they want to work towards a full compatibility in the future. So we have to wait how this will go. So let's look at some of the features. So here we have the softmax function in Python and we can rewrite this in NumPy, which looks similar. For example, we also have this define a function and then we return something. But here we have this struct, which I will show you in a moment again. So let's go over some of the features here. First of all, they say it has progressive types. So we can leverage types for better performance and error checking. Then it has zero cost abstractions. So we can take control of storage by inline allocating values into structures. So this is what I just showed you. Here we can define a struct, which looks similar to a class, but it has some differences. So first of all, for example, you can also write your init function, but then you might notice these type pins here. And with this, we can take more control of the storage. Then we can have ownership and borrow checker so we can take advantage of memory safety without the rough edges and in fact they claim to be as safe as Rust. Then you can have portable parametric algorithms so you can leverage compile time meta programming to write hardware agnostic algorithms and reduce boilerplate. And then you get language integrated auto tuning so you can automatically find the best values for, for your parameters and take advantage of the target hardware. And then some more features they list here and I also want to point out the documentations that you can check out. So for example, they have the section about basic systems programming extensions. So for example, one of the extensions are the let and var declarations that you can use on top of your normal Python code, of course. So here you can use this for immutable and mutable types. Then you get the struct type that I already showed you, which looks similar to a class, but has some differences. Then you get strong type checking, then you can overload functions. So this is similar to C++ or Java and Swift. So here you can write a function that has the same uh, syntax so as two init functions, for example, but it has different arguments. And then here also you have this function definition. So this is similar to a def keyword in Python and you can also write def function. But then again here with this you get some more functionality and for this I recommend to check out the documentation. Then you get a copy init and a move init special method. 
And then you also get this section about parameterization. And yeah, so again, if you want to go into more depth, then check out the documentation. I will put the link in the description. So how can you try Mojo? Um, at the moment, it is not yet publicly available. So you have to sign up here and wait until you get access. And once you have access, you can try it out via the so-called Mojo Playground, which is just a two-piter notebook with also the Mojo compiler in the background. So then here you can write, for example, also Python code and then also cells with Mojo code and then try this out. But again, it is not yet publicly available, so you cannot simply install this on your own machine. So you have to use it via their playground. And also it is not yet open source, so they have a repository and here they write, we plan to open source Mojo progressively over time, but it's changing very quickly now. And we believe that a small tight-knit group of engineers with a shared vision can move faster than a community effort. So we also have to wait until this will go open source. So yeah, this is just a very short overview of Mojo. At first glance, it looks and sounds very exciting, but uh, as you can see here, it is still very early. So we have to wait and see. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about Mojo, if you also think it could change the way how we write AI applications in the future. And if you want to try it out yourself, and also if you want to see more tutorials in the future on my channel, let me know. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.